What's up guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about how to change negative relationship patterns. And this one is so important to me. It's so close to my heart because I talk to so many of you who tell me that their coworkers are nagging on them, that people are asking them to do things and you feel obligated to do them. There is like so much going on. This is so deep. This is actually a second part video. The first one was how to deal with negative people you can't avoid. So there we talk about the mistakes not to do so after this video definitely watch this one but as i said please watch this i've been there i know what you're going through and you can fix it but it's not going to change by you just switching positions or meeting other people or one door slamming people metaphorically you have to really understand what's going on inside of you what you can actively do to change those patterns with absolutely every person in your life so we're not talking here about only romantic relationships i'm talking about coworkers, friends family whoever you're around and you'll see you have this pattern not just with one person in your life or if you have that then it's because you pretty much focus all your attention on that one relationship before we get started I want to remind you I just launched the epic life bootcamp it's a group coaching experience for three months you can check out all the information in the description and there you have all the other links for all the materials that could help you as well so the first step is to actually make a list of all the behavior you don't like and I'm serious about this do not think you can just think of it or that you can oh like I know what's going on I don't even have to actively think about it I just know it's not gonna happen it's not gonna work because guess what you've been doing this for the last 20 30 40 50 years and it hasn't helped so please please write it down you take a notebook and you write down every behavior that you didn't like I'm talking about the friend who cuts you off I'm talking about the co-worker who makes jokes at your expense I'm talking about your father asking you to do things that he just doesn't feel like doing when you don't have the time or the willingness to do any of that be very specific like think about what happened really the last week and write everything down and please have in mind it's not about saying oh I should be above it this shouldn't bother Bother me I should just you know listen to positive music and not care See, I'm a big fan from getting yourself from a negative mindset to a positive one and being all uplifting and happy and doing steps that will help it but this won't last if you don't do this one specific thing which is to do something that will change the situation in the long run if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you just keep telling yourself oh it's all good it's all rainbows and Sun and all happy you will break down because you can't outrun your problem but if if you say I'm gonna work on my positive mindset so every day I'm doing gratitude I'm doing meditation you're really doing the work and you're actually doing the steps I'm talking about in this video you'll definitely see a huge improvement in everything because you're taking control of the situation you're not a victim to your circumstances that being said we come to step number two think of somebody you really highly respect and think how they would react in this situation you would think oh this would never happen to them nobody would dare to talk to them like this like they talk to me so how can I compare this well they're people just like you Whatever I'm doing, what's working for me, it will work for you as well. You have your own ways of doing this. And later on in this video, we're gonna talk about specifically what you can do with the way you're built and the way you operate in this world to get this done. But realize this is not something only special people get to avoid. I didn't avoid this. I was somebody who was always the center of every nagging, of every bullying in school, of all of this because I attracted it. When people say you attracted it, what it actually means is that you crave it on some point because this feels like home. This is what you think you deserve and this is how the universe should work. You should be the one who takes on too much, who is the scapegoat, who is the center of bullying or the center of doing more than everybody else. You have to be the survivor or the martyr. Those are things we carry with us and guess who we attract who feels comfortable staying with us or how this dynamic goes up and up you attract people who want to put this on to somebody because they carry all this emotional weight with them and they're just waiting for somebody to take that weight off of them because that's what they've been taught or that's the situation they grew up in of course their solution in the end is to deal with their own things and to realize they cannot put this on other people and therefore change their own mindset their own behavior so they don't even carry that much weight but now we're talking about you you being the one who takes on all of this all this negative emotion all those negative patterns you might be thinking oh I'm always attracting narcissists or people who just use me and I'm the nice one and I'm just even mad at myself for not taking the steps necessary to get out of it please forgive yourself realize that this is caused because of something you experienced early on in life it's okay 
that is your inner child really screaming for help and you you the adult you will help her or him you will stand up for yourself and you will do the things necessary and that's why i really want you to think of that person that you respect how they would act in the situation would they allow somebody to talk to them like this what does that really mean that they allow you got to think of it like this if there are two people coming into a new job for example one of them has healthy boundaries has overcome their inner limiting beliefs and the other one has it if there's somebody who has the urge to put their stuff onto you you'll have a different reaction from both people the first one who hasn't overcome their limiting beliefs will think well of course it's obvious yeah i'm new here and it's just stressful and i you know i deserve to be treated like this this of course happens subconsciously most of the time you're not even aware that this is something that shouldn't be happening that's why remember step one write everything down you have to be aware of it so you can change something about it the second person who has overcome their limiting beliefs once the person from the job comes up to them and starts bullying them or putting them down or whatever it is they're not going to feel first off oh i should be above it i don't care that's not how it works it's not that i go up and i just say i don't care if people do this to me and they have so i really really understand this they have I, at my last job, remember getting in there and there was somebody on my level, but he was there for much longer. And he tried to put some task onto me and say it in a way which was, I'm the boss, you're just the new kid. Like, this is how you're gonna do it. You know what I said? I said, listen, I'm gonna let you get away with it because you don't know me yet. You cannot talk to me this way that we understand each other. See, most people are not that bold as I am. You know, I've built this over years and years and years. But guess what? That guy got taken back. Like after a while, we actually became friends and he started respecting me so much because I stood up for myself. It wasn't a test. He didn't do it because he wanted to be mean to me. He did it because people have been doing this to him for the last three years. But that's not your problem. You're not here to mainly have compassion for the other person. You're mainly here to have compassion for yourself. And when you do that, guess what? You're actually being the best representation, the best example for somebody else to stick up for themselves. As I said, I do not expect you to be as bold as I am. Specifically, you have to really believe in what you're saying. If you just like read it off a script and you feel like, oh, like I don't really believe this. I actually care about if that person respects me and that that person thinks I can take it it's not gonna make a difference you actually have to believe it and we're actually gonna work on you believing that you deserve respect and harmony around and please please don't just leave it like this if you just say i want harmony and i want everybody to get along if you don't really put actions behind it what's gonna happen is that you go into the day you want a harmonious and nice like environment and then somebody's being mean to you you don't do anything about it and then you feel like yeah i wanted the harmony and guess what it didn't happen and then you get mad at yourself and then it's like a vicious circle be aware, if you want long-term harmony, you have to disrupt the harmony as soon as possible if something's happening that you know is going to cause you to at some point either burn out or completely flip out and yell at everybody. We want to avoid those situations. We want you to have harmony. That means your biggest goal is for people to stop nagging you, for people to stop doing things to you or talking to you in a way that you don't like. They don't need to understand you. They don't need to have compassion for you. This should be a very secondary thought. The first goal is for them to stop doing this. And I've had this even with my father. Like at some point, it really didn't matter to me if he respects me. It really didn't matter if he thinks that I'm being obedient or if I'm being respectful towards him. I just wanted harmony. And in order to get that, you have to disrupt it as soon as something is happening that is causing you not to feel harmony within yourself. But how do we do that? Well, this is when we come to step number three, which is practice at home. You actually write down on a piece of paper or you can say it to yourself. It really doesn't matter. Whatever comes most natural to you what you would say and that's when we get to the very specific part of who you are if you're somebody who's a lot about body language use that if you're somebody who's very precise use that how would you act and then say it out loud since you're thinking all the time about how that person treated you badly and what they said and that you didn't say anything what would you say please 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 do not skip this step 
so many. Most people think, yeah, I know what I would say, but yeah, but have you said it out loud? If you're not able to say it out loud when you're by yourself looking in the mirror, for example, you're definitely not going to be able to get something out of your mouth when you're in front of that person. You have to say it out loud when you're by yourself and you'll see how that in itself will already make you feel uncomfortable. I'm sure you're not going to be able to stay in front of the mirror and say, who do you think you're talking to? Huh? You can't do this. Like this is ridiculous. If you have problems expressing yourself in front of that person, you're not going to be able to have that big of an expression when you're by yourself either. So this is a learning process and you have to start now. So please start practicing. Say it in front of the mirror as often as you like. Even if you have to process things that had happened that are still on your mind, really get it out. You can start with music, but mainly get it out physically through speaking, through body language, whatever is your thing the way you would if you were in the situation with that person again. Another thing that we keep telling ourselves that is keeping us subconsciously from doing the step is actually step four, which is thinking of bad consequences. You feel like if I talk like this to my dad, he's not going to respect me or he's going to feel disrespected himself. Or if you say, well, if I say this to my boss, or even if I say this to my coworker, he will make my life a living hell. Those are all the things that go through our mind that we tell ourselves are the reason why we don't say anything. Or you might be thinking, well, there are people working for me and you know, they're not doing what I want them to do, but I'm going to stay nice. I'm going to stay friendly because if I really put my foot down at some point, I'm going to need their help and they're just not going to do it because then they don't respect me. I can't even say that you're lying to yourself, but those things are not for the bait. It's like saying if you're in a situation with somebody who hits you to say, yeah, if I don't allow them them to hit me, then they're going to get really mad at me and then they're going to leave me and so on. Well, it's not up for debate because I'm not allowing anybody to hit me. And that's how it comes with everything else. You will see when you have set those rules and you say, what is the worst thing that could actually happen? And at a job, it would be that you get fired. If you really stand up for yourself, well, I'm willing to take that risk. There are certain things I'm not going to tolerate. And I know this is not something you can do from one second to the other, but it will get better the more you work at it. But you have to really think about it. What's the worst thing that could happen? And you'll realize it's probably much less bad than you think it is. So for example, let's say with your friends and you think, oh, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen if I stand up to her and tell her that I don't like what she's doing and I'm not going to go, what, she's going to be mad at you? She will not want to be your friend anymore? Well, if that's the case, then you don't want to be friends with her in the first place. This all leads to step number five, which is the burning stove metaphor. I always use this one because it's so true. Let's say you have a little child and you want to tell that child not to touch the stove. You can tell him, oh, you're going to hurt yourself. You can ask him, why do you want to touch the stove? What's that going to bring you? You can tell your kid, well, if you burn your finger on the stove, I'm going to be sad. You're going to be hurt. Why are we doing this? This story will go on and on and on. But the truth is, once the kid burns himself a little bit, he will never touch that hot stove again. And it might be painful that you think, oh, so it has to happen that the kid actually burns their finger before they stop doing it. Hopefully not. But when it comes to interpersonal relationships, that's exactly it. The person has to feel a consequence to their action because one of the main reasons they're doing this is not because they rationally and theoretically think it's right. It's because subconsciously this is what they're drawn to. And in order to stop this automated process, they have to be reminded automatically not to do it. And how do you do that? You do that by showing them a mirror. What do I mean by that? Well, what I actually mean is that if they do something that causes an emotion in you, for example, being disrespected, you're going to be a mirror. You're going to make them feel the way they made you feel. That does not mean that you have to make fun of them if they're making fun of you. But at some point you do you might feel so bad for making fun of somebody else. But if they're making fun of you at that moment, you have to make them feel like this is not okay. How are you going to make them feel that if you make them feel what you're feeling at that moment? Because you're not the one causing the pain. You're not the one causing this uncomfortable situation. That person is because they started. You taking on this pain and uncomfortableness because of something they did is not right. It's not fair, not to you and not to them. Make them feel what they're creating. I know this feels horrible. I've been there. I didn't want to hurt people's feelings, but if they do this, then they're causing this. 
Also, please go back to step number three and practice this at home. You will see the more often you actually bring it out of your mouth, not just in your head, the easier it will get. I know that this is not a process that you can change from one day to the other, but the more you lean into it, the easier it's gonna get, the more success you're gonna have with all those relationships. You will feel free, liberated, and just in peace. And it's just worth everything. But you have to be aware that you have to be the bad guy in those situations situations in order to create the biggest harmony in your life because it's not possible for you to have a harmonious peaceful life if you don't tell people when they hurt you. It's not possible because guess what? The moment they're doing this to you, you're already not in harmony. And when you don't say anything or do anything to make them aware what kind of emotion they just caused in you, they're going to continue. Not because they're bad people, just because this is the way they operate. You have to be the one who tells them what is okay and what is not okay. And don't care if people think you're weak or stupid or slow or whatever it is that you think they might think of you. Even if you're just scared for them not to like you, let them not like you. You're better than this. You do not need people to like you who talk to you this way. Either they're going to feel bad and take a step back, recognize what they've been doing and change their behavior, or if not, they just not going to care about you. You're not going to care about them. You'll realize what losers they are and you will let them go. Please be the best friend in your life. Start standing up for yourself and change those negative relationship patterns because these patterns you will keep carrying on in your life until you change them. I really hope that helped you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the content and make sure if you want to join the bootcamp or you want to look into any other programs or working with me, check out all the links in the description. Like always, I wish you a wonderful day and I talk to you next time. Bye.